Hey there and welcome back everybody. Um, it's one of those rare occasions where I actually get to give you pertinent and relevant marketing advice, or at least I plan to. Granted, this is an old camera and a bottom um, feeder at that because it's very cheap by now but what you are looking at here is the very first micro four thirds camera from Panasonic and it's still kind of useful today because I really believe you could well potentially uh, start uh, your uh, photography hobby or well at least I think you can um, it's rather quaint because I, I got this thing for a couple of reasons. The main one being the lens it came with. This lovely little 1232 uh, Micro Four Thirds uh, Panasonic Pancake model. But other than that, I thought to myself I could use this G1 camera as a secondary option, a com complementary device to my uh, old uh, GH4, my monster <laughs> GH4, which is, I guess it will become a bit obsolete, but it's still good for me. Uh, nonetheless, uh, little did I know that this thing <laughs> doesn't actually film and I'm not much of a photographer, so I basically got it by accident and really I will not be able to use it to its full potential but that's okay because it only cost me 50 euros with shipping included so that's a very good deal for me as I would have gladly paid that amount for the lens alone so really I guess this thing was well for me at least was quite the bargain I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this camera, but for now I'm just going to try and review it and hopefully show you if this thing is worthy of your attention and money. Uh, so without any further ado, let's take a closer look at what this thing came with. So naturally the camera itself. Um, there's this um, original strap which is looking quite nice. It's not a worn camera, but uh, the, the, I don't know, the self-healing paint system, this satinated look, satin look is starting to peel off. And when you clean the camera with a bit of alcohol, uh, the, mm, the first layer of paint gets rubbed off the camera. So it's not really pleasant, but it's mainly an aesthetic issue. Um, the lens itself is right here. Now this little bugger was uh, actually opened and fixed at some point, but it's functioning correctly at the moment. I'll do a proper review and comparison with my other lens available. Stick around for that. It's a manual pancake lens and it's great at uh, it shines at autofocus and uh, color accuracy. Uh, at least that's what I have found, but feel free to uh, contradict me on that one because I'm not a huge photographer or a filmographer for that matter. Continuing with the uh, accessory uh, kit for the G1, there's this micro USB type cable. Uh, and the charger brick and adapter for the power, the power cord, all original. Also here you could find the battery. It's a, well, it's a specific battery for the G1 and I believe the G2. It's quite capacious for its day at 1250 milliamp hours. Let me just try to zoom in and show you what the battery is all about. So there's the main information for the battery. It's still working quite nicely, so that's a plus. And the meager accessory kit for this camera continues. By the way, this is the 
the port for the uh, HDMI cable and micro as USB cable and somewhere around here there's supposed to be an SD card slot let me just check it to see where that thing really is I have no clue and that's rather <laughs> embarrassing for me right there it is so the SD card it came with a trial as the 64 megabytes card <laughs> so i guess the seller wanted me wanted to show me that the car the the camera is actually functioning properly other nice features uh, for this camera uh tilting and rotating screen here an lcd screen uh, and of course it's requiring me to attach a lens so let's just do that and see what this camera is all about. So for the purpose of this demonstration I will attach the 12 to 32 uh, millimeter lens that the camera came with. This is a Panasonic original um, lens. Uh, it's a pancake variant. Let me just open it. Now we are looking at the 12 millimeter wide section let me just see if i can show it to you like this now uh the the only problem with this lens that i see is that it's only an autofocus lens so i'll have to place it in autofocus i just uh went ahead and took a picture on the first auto sec uh, setting that i could find and let's review it again in playback mode. I'll try to uh, zoom in a bit. So subject separation is pretty decent even with this amateur lens. I'll explain to you later on why this is important for me. But for basic photography, I think it did great. There's a lot of detail captured in the photo and keep in mind that I just adjusted the white balance and I think I have fiddled around with the, with the aperture but really I'm not much of a photographer so don't take my word for any of this. <laughs> Sorry if, I, if I'm sounding a bit unprofessional. Now, build quality of this uh, camera is a bit flimsy and well i don't know it's i guess it's polarizing and it's all over the place on the one hand uh this uh, paint is starting to peel off and really create smudges on your hands which is very unpleasant on the other hand it has a moving tilting screen uh, rotated on 270 degrees on its plane in its plane uh it's great for um, protecting your LCD. Uh, the construction is fairly solid and the, the whole thing is light and nice to hold in hand. I think uh, ergonomics are top notch for its period. And I also don't mind the, the lack of, uh, of a touch screen, even though that would have been nice. I think the menu is quite, uh, um, intuitive and easy to work on so i guess i guess i could recommend this camera for a beginner photographer but don't expect instagram level pics from this one because it's it's very finicky and you can well you can sort of tool around with it to get the best result I would recommend it though for aspiring photographers so you can break your teeth into things like this and to evolve into the micro four thirds universe along with it. I don't necessarily think a full frame um, camera is recommended if you are only an amateur and I think the micro four thirds realm still has a lot to offer. So this has been an honest review of the Lumix G1, the genesis for the Micro Four Thirds and Panasonic modern cameras in general. Uh, would I recommend it? Well, for 50 euros, 
even without the lens i think it's a great deal and it can familiarize you with the micro four thirds uh, realm as mentioned before i think it's a great great option to carry around in a holiday or if you are fearful that your main camera will get damaged this one i think will be able to perform adequately and get you decent shots uh, will this be a collectible? I mean, who knows? It didn't sell quite as well because the G2 that followed this model perfected the lineup and gave filming options as well. So they're not necessarily rare, but I think they're they're going to get harder to come by. Now, as for values uh, right now, I don't think it will be worth more than 50 euros anytime soon. Maybe a pristine example, which didn't have, which will not have, uh, you know, smudgy paint uh, and uh, worn out looks. But those are quite rare to come by. And I think they will fetch a premium even though I consider them useless because you don't want a museum piece you want a camera that you can actually use from time to time it's beautiful for artistic for photography and I sincerely recommend it for a beginner um, beginner photographers so that has been all for me thanks again for watching and remember I own collect and sometimes buy useless obsolete tech stuff like this one so you don't have to thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye bye